In this tutorial, we're going to look at animating objects in 3ds Max. So let's go ahead and start by creating a plane. This could be any object type. It could be cameras or lights or geometries that you create. Um, we'll just uh, start with a plane. And so down here is your timeline. And right now it's set from 0 to 100. If you want to change that, you can open up the time configuration. And 100 corresponds to how many stills or how many frames you're going to render. So right now it goes from 0 to 100. Um, I'm just using a standard frame rate, but you can change it to custom if you want. The one thing I would say is don't go below 24 frames per second. 24 or higher um, is kind of known to be the number of frames you need so that you see a smooth animation. Otherwise, it might get a little choppy. Um, so I'm just going to start with 30. That's my preferred frame rate here. Um, and so 30 frame per second uh, with 100 frames would be a little over 3 seconds. So 90 frames would be 3 seconds. So we'll just keep it at that. That seems fine. I'll say OK. Um, and let's go ahead and get started. There's two ways you can do this. You can set keys manually, or you can do auto keys. Uh, if I'm just doing moves and, and rotates, I'm going to set key. I prefer that. Um, you'll set your first key here at 0. That's where I want it to begin. And then let's say we move it over here a little bit, and then rotate. Let's rotate it a little bit that way. We can then uh, move down to 50. Sorry, I have to move the the um, timeline before you do these moves. So that's really important. You move the timeline, then you do your transformations, then you set your key. So I'll go down now to 100. I'll move it a little further. Let's move it a little bit over there. And I'll just rotate it again and set my key again. So now as I toggle along this timeline, you can see it moves and rotates uh, depending on where I set those keys. So the next thing we can do is actually make this a little more interesting. I'm going to hit Z and zoom selected. Let's add a modifier to this. So I'm going to add my bend modifier. And I found that with bend modifiers, it's better to do auto key. Any, any of the modifiers, I prefer auto key. So as you adjust it, as you change these parameters, it will automatically insert those keyframes. So now I'll set it to auto. And we'll begin here. We'll just set uh, this first one at 0. We'll move down, let's say, to about 37. And I'll add this bend on the X. And you can see these little red uh, ticks that show up around the, the toggle arrows there. That means it's now an animated variable. So if I toggle this back, you see it goes from 0 and then bends. And then we can go all the way to the end here and, and bend it even further. And so that's true of all these um, modifiers. So you can see it's now bending as it goes. We could add a twist modifier. And uh, again, let's set that key at zero. We can maybe we start twisting it over here at 57. And you can see it again adds those variables. So that's true for all parameters. It's true for materials. You can change the um, like a texture, a procedural texture, and animate it. You can change an extrude amount and add a poly, for example. All these kind of parameters that you have can be animated as long as your timeline is set and you're, you're auto keying as you go. So another kind of fun tool, now we've animated this object, is our Snapshot tool. And if you go here to Tools Snapshot, it basically creates a bunch of mesh meshes throughout that animation. So we can choose Mesh. We could say the range is from 0 to 100. And then how many steps, how many frozen geometries do you want along that path? So let's say we want, I don't know, let's go with like 15. We can then say OK. And it creates 15 uh, copies of that mesh from 0 to 100 along that timeline. So you get, if you move this, you can see it going through those different spaces. So that's kind of a neat way. And these are now meshes. So for example, I could select that. If I want that to be an edit poly, you could just right click and convert to an edit poly. Or you can add an edit poly modifier. Um, you could do them as instances. In this case, I just did copies. But now these are geometries that you can edit. So for example, I could attach. I could select this one and I could attach it to its neighbor. And now that these are attached, I could use, for example, like a bridge between those two and, and actually start to work between these geometries now that they are, are geometries in the scene.